What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to Keep It Techie. And today I wanted to show you guys another dope self-hosted project that you can set up within your home lab. And today that piece of software is called Arugo, which is a secure self-hosted WeTransfer alternative that you can deploy on your own server. And I'll show you guys how to do it the right way with Docker. So that means no third party nonsense, no subscription fees, just pure control over your file sharing. And the best part, we're gonna make it accessible from an IP address. So no more local hosts. You can actually host it outside of your network as long as you got the ports open and all that good stuff. Now let's go to hop over and I can give you guys a quick overview of the application. <laughs> All right, so I'm at the GitHub for this application. It was created by Dean Ward. And so of course I'll have a link down in the description of the video so you guys can get to the GitHub page, but you can see it's free and open source and he's constantly improving it. He actually improved it yesterday. So he's working on it, you know what I'm saying? Which is super cool. And I wanted to show him some support by putting it out there so you guys can check out this application because I think it's an awesome application. And as you can see, it's mostly written in PHP and you got some JavaScript in there, Dockerfile, Blade and all that stuff up in there. But if we scroll down, you get a couple of screenshots of what it actually looks like. You know what I'm saying? You can check out their demo. And one thing I wanted to show you guys, if you go a little further down, this kind of breaks out all the key features. So effortless deployment, easy to deploy on Docker with the provided Docker compose file. And I'll show you guys that in a second, but human friendly share links. So they're easy to read, you know what I'm saying? And this is an example right here. So you get to go and then you got secure access control. So only authorized users can create shares. So that's dope, especially if you're hosting it, you know what I'm saying? And then also I use this SQLite as a backend database which is super simple to set up. And it's also small, flexible configuration. You can me mess around with it. You can change the branding. You can make it look how you want it to look. You do have those options. And then also the setup is super easy as well as it's a clean and intuitive web UI. And lastly, this was something I wanted to point out above when we first pulled up the site, but it's MIT licensed. You're good to go there. And then you can check out the history right here. He's got that there, but here is the example file. So when I go in to my terminal and I start creating files and all that stuff, you can get the actual compose file here. That's why I put the links to these projects in the video. So a lot of times I get comments like, where did you copy that from? Where did you get that from? It's always tied to those links that I put in there. But I've also started documenting a lot of the stuff on my other website, which is my wiki.kitpro.us. I also have a link down in the description as well. But I have a Docker install script that I wanted to show you guys when we get Docker installed on this new server. So let's go ahead and hop over to my virtual machine so I can show you guys that. I'm gonna jump back and forth between here so you can see me copy the Docker compose file as well as setting up Docker using the script that I have available out here for anybody to get and use. Hey y'all, Josh here from Keep It Techie. Real quick, let's talk about Rocky Linux. This distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid enterprise ready Linux solution. It all started after Red Hat dropped CentOS and Gregory Kurtzer, the OG co-founder of CentOS, brought us Rocky Linux as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community driven, open source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Linux 8.10 is out now, giving you that enterprise grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you wanna keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community, for the community, and it's here to stay. Stay techie, y'all. All right, so it's time to get our hands dirty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install Docker. Now, if you set up a new server, especially Ubuntu, you have the option to install Docker. You can install it that way, but you also need Docker Compose. So I recommend you go check out one of my videos where I break down each one of those installs so you can install them separately on your system. If you already got Docker installed and you need Docker Compose, I got the link that you can download the latest version of Docker Compose and then get it installed on your system. But let's go down and use Nano to create a file. And actually the first thing you wanna do is update your system, but my script will update the system. So I'm just naming it install dash Docker and then dot Shaw and we can do that. And then let's go back over to 
our browser and I'll show you guys how to get that script. Like I said, all you gotta do is click on Docker and install script right there. That'll bring you to this page. But if you scroll down, it, it breaks out the full script. Like it's broken into pieces so you guys can understand what's going on in the script and how I actually developed it. But then I had a full script down here at the bottom and you could click here and it'll download it and you can open that actual file. I know you guys can't see it, but it, it downloaded to my downloads directory and I could just copy this full script to my system. And let's switch back over to our terminal and then you'll see me paste it in there. And so this is just basically that same script that's on my site. You can also do a wget and then just copy that link from the website and download the file that way on the server, whatever server you want. So if it's a remote server or something and you wanna just download it directly from the site, that's an easy way to actually do it. So let's go on and save this right fast and go through the process of actually setting this up. Let's run chmod and then we wanna make it executable. So press enter, that'll make it executable. And all we gotta do is type period forward slash and then select that script press enter and it'll ask for your pseudo password because all the commands in there use sudo so it's going to ask you for your pseudo password or you can run the script using sudo but it's definitely going to ask you because it's making changes to the system by installing docker and docker compose it's giving it authorization to make those changes to the system by installing just those applications and as you can see it's super simple man we get everything in there and I also put in there, you need to log out and log back in order for your group changes to take effect. Because when I install Docker, I also add the current user that ran the script to the Docker group. So you have access to it. And all you had to do is log out, log back in. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna just exit out and then head back into the server. And we now have access to run those Docker commands without having to type sudo. That's the benefit of doing that. And so let's go down and get Ergo installed. So first off, let's create a directory under here. So let's go make directory and just put dash P. We don't have to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then Arugo and press enter and let's CD to that directory. Boom. And then let's go down and create our Docker Compose files. Type nano and let me move my cursor out the way so you guys can see. And then you just want to type Docker Compose dot yaml or yml and press enter that'll open up that file and we'll go down there i'll go down and paste in my compose right fast and i didn't have to make many changes to it so i copied this straight from the link on github so as long as you copy that it'll work properly let's go down and save this right fast press enter and one other thing we need to do is create a storage location we can make this in this directory make dir and then storage we can name it storage and press enter and then you can just verify the ownership which we don't really need to because i know it's owned by me i created it but i definitely want you to run this just in case you're using a different account or something to that effect you could change it and give the ownership to whoever you needed to have that ownership and i'm gonna just put 1000 because that's my id my user id and then we want to specify that storage directory and let's do it this way i always do at least do this that way it knows where it's at boom and then let's go back and change the permissions let's do 775 and ch mod so change the permissions to that directory and now we're pretty much good to go we can go down and run this docker compose file now let's go down and clear right fast so i can get it back up to the top all you have to do is type docker and then compose and don't get confused by the older version. I, I installed the newest version of Docker Compose. The old version used to have a dash in here. It'll be like Docker dash compose. The newest version has Docker space compose. And then you type up and then dash D for detach. So let's go down and press enter. What it's gonna do is pull that actual Docker container and then get it set up on your system using the configuration file that we created. So it'll set up the ports and all that stuff, the default port and all that stuff within our Docker Compose file. And boom, that's pretty much it. Our Arugo container is running now. So let's type Docker PS just to check it right fast and just make sure it's up and running. And if you look at it, this is the actual name of the container. So if you ever need to stop it or something, you can use the container ID by using Docker stop and then the container ID or the container name, either or that'll work. And let's say you want to look at the logs or something to that effect. You can also use the name or the ID. So 
you can type and i'll show you guys this command but docker logs and then you have to specify the container you're talking about so we're going to use that arugo app one press enter and i'll give you the logs right there you'll see that it's actually running so q worker php into running state so it is up everything is running so if you need to troubleshoot something this is a good place to go uh and just look through the logs to see what's all going on with the docker container you have running now let's go ahead and get to the part where we set up and configure our web ui for arugo and so let's switch over back to our websites and let's go on and type an ip address of this server and just to show you guys what the ip address is let's get back over here let's type ip a that'll give us the ip address and what we're looking for is right here this is our ip address of the server so it's 10.10.0.122 and then also the port for arugo is 9998 and you can modify that port if you want to but i just put 99 based on their documentation but switch back over to the website and type in our ip address so 10.10.0.122 and then the port is 9998 and press enter and boom there's arugo and super cool it says thanks for installing arugo and then also you can set up ssl certs if you want to for this server all that good stuff can be done on this server you know what i'm saying if you're hosting it yourself just to make everything secure but this is all local right now but if you were to expose it to outside of your network you definitely want to put a cert on it and so one of the first things it asks for is an ip address i just use my ip address so keep it techie at gmail.com and then put your name in there and then create a password so i create a simple password so we can create an account and this will be the admin account so i could have named it admin but i'm just do josh and create this admin account because i'm the only one that will be using this so user created successfully I'm not going to save that password but here we go so this is arugo and so let me quickly show you guys how to use it right fast so i'm gonna grab that docker compose file right fast and i'm gonna upload it to the site let's hit add and then we can just go to recent and boom install docker sha boom and we uploaded it to arugo and you can also drag and drop and all that stuff and then so we added it there in order to be uploaded all we had to do is upload that file down here at the bottom so we can upload it up and this will give you the link right here that you share with the person that you want to share this with so just copy that and then let me open up another tab so we can go to that link right fast and it actually didn't copy so make sure you copy it and i wonder why that button is not working so i'm assuming it's currently not working at the moment or at least for me so paste that in there press enter and this will open up the file that you can download so this is a simple way of actually setting this all up and then sharing files and as you can see there is an expiration date on it so it shares it for about seven days that's the same thing that we transfer do i think is seven days but you do have the option to go into the settings of this and make changes so you can go into the settings you could change the expiration date or how much time Time does it take for it to expire you can extend it to a certain amount of time if you always want this thing hosted and so let me show you guys a little bit more of the settings like i said you can go through and make changes to the branding you can do background images logos they got some other ui settings down here you can make changes to the color accents let's go to dracula that's cool or github light there we go that looks just like github so that's super cool and then you can also install themes if you want to set up a custom thing you can just look at how to create it and create your own and i'm sure it's on the github page how to actually develop your own theme that you can set up on this system and then let me show you the other options so system settings you can go up in here check this out and i didn't save those changes that's why i switched right back to the purple but you got your general your shares your email smtp uh you can go through here and check all this out or make those changes if you need to and also what people can do to actually access it and then you set up users you can specify specific users you know what i'm saying as the only ones that can access this or people have to type in a username and password in order to access the files and then that's the shares that we were just at so anytime you share something it'll log it here especially if it's still active and then also you can go into your profile you can make changes there if you need to but that's pretty much it for the application it's a very simple application but it's a very cool application that allows you to share files with any and everybody. All right. And that's how you self-host your own WeShare alternative using Arugo and Docker. And so now you can share files securely and easily. No corporate middleman needed. And if you found this video helpful, go down and smash that like button. Subscribe for more open source and Linux content. And also drop a comment down below on what I should cover next. And as always, keep it techie. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.
Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind. But think about this. The time is going to pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career. It's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Wow. <laughs>